they put a video up that showed their complete process. And I said, well, thank you for showing me how you make these. I'm going to do the same thing. Hi, and welcome back. Um, I want to talk about my third tote that I made. I saw a picture online of a tote and it was weathered to perfection. And it had the design, it had the patina and the design that I really, really, really like. And I didn't want to buy from this company for several reasons, but one is they've changed the leather since the leather that that tote photo was made from and you just never know what you're going to get unless you're buying on the pre-owned market and you're buying something you can see a picture of the exact item you're going to get um plus their price point for just a plain simple tote was kind of high for me so i you know i have a few skills so i thought you know what i've made two totes and i know what leather i like and i'm just going to make one in the same design that they make them and what's funny is they put a video up that showed their complete process. And I said, well, thank you for showing me how you make these. I'm going to do the same thing. So, um, but the one thing I was able to do was adjust the dimensions to what suited me. And I've talked about that before in my other tote uh, videos that I've, the other two totes that I've made. And you can look those up in my, my list of videos. But here is the tote I made. Let me take both of these off so they don't rattle. And it is a very simple design. Uh, no stitching on the straps. Those are rivet attached. I sewed it inside out. It's my first one to turn inside out. And I did machine sew this, which is the first time I've machine sewed a bag. But because the stitching is hidden, I can do it on my machine. My machine can be a little temperamental and the stitches can be a little... Um, uneven when I'm sewing something this thick so I don't want them to show so this is really good for that type of machine that that might be a little temperamental and then on the bottom it's really interesting how this maybe I should turn it inside out I don't really want to ignore the pouch I don't know if you can see down in there but basically this is a big rectangle and then when you bend it you sew down the sides to almost to the bottom and then when you bend it you have two triangles and then those triangles still with the bag inside out I just put rivets in them I didn't even try to sew them I just riveted them from the outside you can't tell whether it's sewn or riveted and this is exactly what that company does and how they make their bags um, they rivet them from the inside and they leave those little triangles some people cut the leather a little different and stitch it at the bottom and you know that's an option too but I went with the easy option and that's basically it it was a rectangle I put this together in just um, one evening and the you know the only nerve-wracking thing is cutting your leather and um, it was a little nerve-wracking to, to machine stitch because I thought you know I don't want to mess this up you can only stitch leather once if you mess up, you have to either cut the bag and start over or just live with the mess up. Because once you punch a hole in leather, it's there and that needle's punching holes all the way down. I did add rivets at the top of the seam row. I don't know if you can see that. And that's just to give that seam some strength. Um, what I did for the pouch is I added um, two snaps. Let me show you on this side. So you'll see there's a rivet here and a rivet here and that holds on the handle. And then between those two rivets is um, a blank area of leather and I added snaps there. And that allows me, in theory, <laughs> and I'll tell you why in theory. Where's my other? So that allows me even to add um, more key rings or uh, key holders or whatever and snap them on in there in there or take them off and so then I had um, 
this that I had made for another bag and this, I made the spacing exactly the same and was able to snap it in and um, it was just a temporary thing I was just going to see how that works and make me another one but I realized that with the green it was real easy to see my pockets and what I had in there and there's a key charm on that so that's it's working great if, if I get tired of it or don't want to use it I can actually take it out because it's snapped in now if I were to do this again I would use stronger bigger snaps and the reason is because these are pretty weak and it doesn't take much for this to unsnap and start flopping around in the bag so I actually put a little dab of glue on each snap and I use that E5000 I think that's what it's called E5000 glue uh, just a little dab and glued those down that just gives them a little extra strength all I would have to do is tug real hard and these would come off so it's not permanent and I, I really like the um, the different colored uh, pockets in there it helps me see real well so and um, there's the bottom like I said this is a very simple design and I was able to choose my my length for my shoulder drop if I want to add a crossbody strap, I can. I don't. I don't want to on this bag. Um, I left a space so that I can put a ring in to hang things from. And the thing that's cool about this for me is I was able to pick my hide. I went to Tandy and I picked a piece of Montana, and Montana is the hide. And the the weird thing is they were almost out. They had one hide, and it was in the the discount pile so that's good I got it for a little less money but it had flaws and stuff but as I was able to lay it out it's actually the height I've got down here as a pad right now um, Montana has a great um, it, to me it's the perfect if you're looking for a British tan rugged type leather Montana is fabulous and um, it's about 150 160 dollars a hide for a full hide first quality and i paid less than that because i got slightly different hide size with a brand on it and some other stuff but i was able to lay the hide out and choose the area that had the markings that i wanted just sort of that already kind of weathered look and i don't know if you can see them i don't know if you can see the wrinkles and markings on there but um, that's that's what I was going for. And then as I carry this bag, it'll patina and weather even more. And um, I'm looking forward to really getting that that aged look that I've always wanted in a tote. And they always come too stiff and too um, too new looking for me. And by being able to pick my own hide, I was able to sort of accelerate that process. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put some specs about the Montana hide up here so you'll know uh, where to get it. Also look down in the description. So what I do is I basically throw everything in there. <laughs> I'm very much just to throw it in. Everything's in pouches. And then I have my coastal hillbilly that I'm carrying right now. This is my... Um, my go-to bag for um, leaving the car so my process is this bag has everything I need with it but it does but it has more than I need to carry on me so I tend to leave this in the car and um, what I take into a store or whatever is my smaller carry whichever smaller carry I'm using at that time and those are always crossbody so I can just go hands-free the the montana leather is a veg tanned hide which i really like but it's soft um it, it's soft even before you use it so uh it's not a stiff veg tanned hide and i really like that and it does squeak i don't know if you can hear the squeak yeah i like that squeak sounds like an old saddle you know when you get up on the saddle it squeaks so that is the third tote that I've made for myself I keep saying that's the last one not doing another one this one was so easy to do I'm not going to say I'll never do another one it really was easy um, I didn't do any hand stitching on it so my hands didn't didn't really start hurting um, so that was that was the strategy behind going for that third uh, third tote so I
I have three totes that I made. Look them up. And um, the, the good thing about making your own tote is you get to pick the size. You get to pick the length of handles. You get to choose your leather, all that stuff. So that's great. And let's see what I keep on it. This is from Portland Leather. It's a mini taco and it carries chapstick and lipstick. So I don't have to go digging in any of my bags for that. And these are pretty hard to get. You have to be on the Insiders Facebook group to get these because um, they tell you when they're going to be available and then you got to hop over there and buy them. And let's see, I've got this tassel. This is one I made for myself. Um, it's a new one in my uh, Etsy shop, Kali Wobbles Designs. And um, I call it the true tassel because it really is a tassel. It's um, not just a bag charm. And it's got that calla lily sort of look to it. Um, I'm making these, so far I've only listed ones that are in multiple colors. And I may do some of these that are black and brown, but I only list them as they're made. So it's not something that I can just sell open-ended on because they take, um, they take a while to put together, uh, more so than any of the other um, bag charms that I sell. So the price point's just a tad bit higher and there's fewer of these available um, and I may start listing these on my Collie Wobbles fan page on Facebook and just sell them right from there um, I'm waiting to see how that works out so um, if you're not already um, have, if you've not already joined my Collie Wobbles fans Facebook page please go over there and do that because you'll find out about stuff like this before I post it on Instagram or anything like that links to all my social medias below. I'm not going to go through all of that with you here. There's just so much. There's so much these days to keep up with. Um, so that's that's the charm I'm using right now. And uh, so check out what I've got new over at Collie Wobbles. I'm not going to be making bags. Uh, I've said that before and I'll say it again. It doesn't mean I'll never make a bag to sell, but um, I'm not going to be making bags to sell. It's just It's just too hard. I mean, yeah, too hard. So anyway, that's the bag I made for myself. I'm real happy about it, and I hope you enjoyed that little video, and you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.